Hello and welcome to chapter 6 in Computers and Healthcare. We are actually discussing computers and health information management. So if you want to start with me on 85, we're going to do something a little different in this chapter. We're going to break this up by the individual systems that we're going to discuss in this chapter. You'll see the systems listed on page 86. And so we're going to do a brief lecture for each. Um, so ones that you want some additional um, reinforcement on, you can listen to these lectures and not have to listen to a big long lecture. All right, so starting with the intro on page 85, we are talking about how the culture of health information management is changing to accommodate the increasing use of technology, changing avenues of patient care, and consumer demands upon the healthcare field. Informatics is a term that has been added to many HIM educational programs to indicate this change and to reflect the growing change that is occurring within HIM. Health informatics is the scientific discipline that is concerned with the cognitive, information processing, and communication tasks of healthcare practice, education, and research, including information science and technology to support these tasks. So information systems are critical to the HIM department. Many of the department's processes depend on information systems to function efficiently and effectively. Some of the information systems used by the HIM department staff, such as the Master Patient Index and the Financial Information System, are available to authorize users throughout the organization. But other information systems are designed specifically for HIM functions, which may limit the usage to the HIM department only or for other departments to use the support used to support the HIM department. So some of our examples are the birth certificate system. That's going to be strictly used by the HIM department. Another one of our examples is a dictation system. It may be purchased and maintained by the HIM department, but the physicians are going to use that to support HIM. And so you see a list of our um, systems we're going to cover on page 86. Um, in this lecture, we're going to talk about release of information and disclosure management system. We're going to talk about encoder and grouper system, cancer and other registry systems, chart locator system, birth certificate system, chart deficiency system, transcription system, healthcare quality indicator system, dictation system, computer assisted coding system, and a clinical documentation improvement system. So we're going to kick this lecture off starting on 86 with release of information and disclosure management systems. The HIM department receives requests for copies of health records on a daily basis. These requests for copies of health records must be logged into the information system to allow for tracking on the status of the request. The release of information system is designed to manage the processing of requests for protected health information received and processed in the HIM department. It continues to track the request as it is processed and acts as a historical database of all requests processed and ultimately used to generate reports. A disclosure management system tracks the disclosures made through the healthcare facility for reporting purposes. And disclosure is the release transfer, provision of access to, or divulging in any manner of information outside of a healthcare facility holding the information. This tracking is required by the HIPAA Act. And covered entities must provide the patient with an accounting of disclosures upon request. This disclosure management system may be part of the ROI system, or it may be a separate information system used by HIM and non-HIM departments. In addition to disclosures, a disclosure management system may also track requests for amendments to PHI as well as restrictions to disclosures. All right, so these, these um, slides are just a little out of order, but um, we're going to kind of work through that. Um, so system functionality. The ROI system is a valuable tool for the ROI staff. Once the request for copies of records are entered into the ROI system, the data can be used for many different purposes to support the workflow. The ROI staff can also use the system to check on the status of request. The staff will be able to determine where in the process the request is and to whom the request has been assigned. Completed requests generally include an indicator showing that the request is in a complete status. 
the date processed, and specifically what has been sent. Individual reports and dates of reports would also be entered. Based on the number of copies and other activities, the ROI staff would also record any changes that were applied. And so, <clears throat> starting down on page um, 88, we're talking about some of the common data elements found in an ROI system. It includes patient name, health record number, patient type, date request received, the type of requester, the name of the requester, the name of the contact at the requester, the address of the requester, the type of request, who it was assigned to, what actions taken, the date the action was taken, the date the request was completed, what information was sent, charges, the amount paid, the amount due, and any comments. The basic patient information, such as name and health record number, are frequently populated in the ROI system by an interface from the admission, discharge, or transfer information system, thus eliminating the need to enter this information. Dropping down to that next paragraph, tables are also an important part of the ROI system. Some tables are the default within the information system, while others can be set up and customized by the healthcare facility. For example, the user only has to enter the name and address of a requester once, thus managing time wisely. After the initial entry, the user is able to select the requester from a drop-down box or other graphical user interface tool. This customization function improves the efficiency of the processes, making it easier and faster for the employee to complete the task. If the requester is from a large organization, there can be a table listing individuals in that organization so that the copies are forwarded to the correct person. Tables also may be used to record charge information, such as charge per copy, microfilm, certification, and other chargeable actions. Moving over to page 89, talking about different kinds of release of information reports. Reporting is an important part of the ROI system. Reports are used by ROI or HIM staff and to communicate with requesters. In a paper environment, the ROI coordinators can generate a list of health records to be pulled so that the appropriate contents of the record can be copied. This list can be sorted into terminal digit or other numeric or alphabetic order to facilitate the retrieval process. Depending on the structure of the department, the ROI ROI or file area staff can use this list to retrieve paper records. Customized letters are critical to the ROI system. Customized letters and forms may be used to communicate with the requester for many purposes, including to notify the requester that the healthcare facility does not have a record of the patient being treated at the healthcare facility or on that date, remind requesters that they have an outstanding balance for copies of health records, Request that copies of health records be paid prior to their release. Provide cover letter for health records being sent. Notify requester that the authorization is invalid. Notify the requester that an authorization is needed. Notify the requester that there will be a delay in the release of information. Notify requester that the health records will be released as soon as the health care facility has received prepayment for copies. Generate invoices for the copies of the health record and generate reminder invoices when payment is not received in a timely manner. HIM department managers monitor the efficiency of the ROI staff through a multitude of management reports. These reports provide information on various functions, including turnaround times, productivity, backlogs, revenue, and accounts receivable, to name a few. Depending on the information contained in the report, the report can include requests by employee, by requester type, by specific requester or all requests. <clears throat> for example, a report on the average turnaround time for all requests or for Blue Cross Blue Shield requests can be obtained. The manager can also track the turnaround times by employee, which can be used in performance evaluations and other management monitoring. Many of these reports become prepackaged with the software, but many information systems allow users to develop and customize their own routine and ad hoc reports. So again, be sure to read that entire section. 
and just cover the highlights in our um, slide here. And so in lecture two, we're going to pick up with encoder and grouper. Happy studying.